Hi, I'm John from OWC. Today, I want to shine some light on a topic that's been showing up a lot lately. And the question is, what is USB-C? There are lots of flavors of USB, and USB-C is currently the most commonly used form of it. It's small, it's easy to plug in, it works with most modern devices from Mac and PC, and it's extremely fast with speeds up to nearly 1,000 megabytes per second. That's the big picture. And now, let's go through what USB-C can do and which of its features you should keep an eye out for when you're buying your next USB-C equipped device. USB Type-C ports are now found on all kinds of devices, from external hard drives to high-end laptops and even some smartphones. While every USB-C port looks the same, not every one offers the same capabilities. First off, the Wikipedia definition. USB-C is a 24-pin USB connector system with a rotationally symmetrical connector, which is fancy talk for you can flip the connector and still get it in the port. The standard USB-C cables also have the same connector on both ends, so you don't have to figure out which end goes where. That has not been the case with all the USB cables we've been using for 20 or so years. Many times you would have a different style connector on each end of the cable. So USB-C is a flippable connection with both ends being the same. Pretty sweet. Speaking of the older USB Type-A port, the rectangle one, that one had some limitations. USB Type-A was simply used as a data port for connecting drives or peripherals like mice. But the thing about USB-C, depending on the specific port's capability, is that it can do much more. While USB-A could only support up to 2.5 watts and 5 volts, which was fine when that technology was first introduced, but nowadays devices require so much more power. So USB-C now supports 100 watts and 20 volts of power delivery. The practical benefits of this include pass-through charging, enabling a USB dock that powers laptops and also charges other devices simultaneously. Something else to note is that USB-C refers to the connector and cable specification, whereas Thunderbolt 3 or 4 refers to the capabilities that are available over USB-C. In terms of speed, the most common speed that USB-C connectors are rated for is 10 gigabits per second. However, some older USB-C ports support just 5 gigabits per second max speeds, so it's important to look for a USB 3.2 Gen 1 X2 or 10 gig designation to verify that a given USB-C port can support 10 gig transfers. That said, all these ports are backward compatible, just at the speed of the slowest elements. One of USB-C's most useful attributes is delivering enough power to charge a host device such as a laptop or a smartphone. In fact, many lightweight laptops that have USB-C ports use them in place of the traditional barrel-style connector where you would typically attach an AC adapter. For example, before the redesign of the M1 Pro and M1 Max Apple laptops, which charge via MagSafe, USB-C was the connection type through which you would charge those machines. USB-C can also support sending simultaneous video signals and power, which means you might be able to connect to and power a native DisplayPort, MHL, or HDMI device, or connect to almost anything else assuming you have the proper adapter and cables, like a Thunderbolt dock from OWC. As I mentioned earlier, perhaps the most useful protocol that USB-C ports can support is Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. Either one adds support for up to 40 gigabits per second of throughput, alongside reduced power consumption and the ability to move up to 100 watts of power over the interface. This is really good for charging devices and really good for fast data transfer. A USB-C port with support for Thunderbolt 3 or 4 means that a single cable is all you need to push power and transfer a large amount of information up to and including video data for two 4K displays. With something like a Thunderbolt hub from OWC, which is outfitted with USB-C connections, you can greatly increase the amount of Thunderbolt accessories you can connect to your machine. Now, like with DisplayPort over USB-C, not every USB-C port you see necessarily has Thunderbolt 3 or 4 support. Check a device's spec sheet or documentation for the Thunderbolt details to be sure. Some devices also may have more than one USB-C port, with only some supporting a Thunderbolt spec. In terms of cables, the one cable to rule them all is going to be a Thunderbolt 4 cable. Our OWC Thunderbolt 4 cables, which range from 0.7 to 2 meters in length, are all 100% universal for all USB-C to USB-C use cases, as well as USB 4. No matter if you're connecting a USB-C device or a Thunderbolt device, you always have the maximum of up to 40 gigabits per second of data transfer possible and certified power delivery of up to 100 watts. Something else to remember, USB-C only speeds max out at 10 gigabits per second, and something has to be clearly marked as Thunderbolt in order to go up to 40 gigabits per second. So if you have drives that aren't performing at the speeds you think they should be, make sure that your drive is designated as Thunderbolt capable and not just USB-C only. 
Again, you always have to check the specs of your machine ports, the data rate, and power delivery, because they're all based on the slowest link of the chain. For example, if you have a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C drive connected to a USB 2.0 port via an adapter, you'll only get USB 2.0 speeds of 480 megabytes per second. Because as mentioned earlier, everything USB-C is backwards compatible at the speed of the slowest element. So in this case, the USB 2.0 port is your slowest element. But the bottom line regarding cables is Thunderbolt 4 is the one cable that works for everything today and yesterday, period. So going back to the original question, what is USB-C? Well, quite simply, it's a rotationally symmetrical connection type. The real question is, what can you do with USB-C? And the answer is a lot. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any more questions, go ahead and put them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. From everyone here at OWC, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.